So earlier today, I had this issue where I pretty much just took down production. And the reason I did that was because I made a bad deployment. I was actually missing part of the config in the deployment script. And it was a really unique opportunity to share with you. So I decided to make a video about it because the resolution to the problem had two different solutions. There was like the easy way and the hard way. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I chose the hard way and why I think you should too. Hey, if you're new to the channel, I'm Will. And on this channel, I talk about all things DevOps from getting your first DevOps job to implementing DevOps throughout your entire team. And I also do some really funny skits too. So be sure and check those out. But meanwhile, today was not so funny. I made this deployment and it was a Kubernetes deployment and in the ingress controller, I was missing the route, which turned out to be the primary route that allowed the whole application to work. And so here was the deal about fixing it. I was troubleshooting it and I was logged into the server looking at it. And so the cursor is just sitting there blinking like right there. Just all I had to do was type cube control edit and the name of the ingress controller and in less than a minute, I could have had this thing back up and running. So why wouldn't I do that? If the solution is that simple and that straightforward, why would I not do that? And the reason is because we don't do things in the dark. Had I done that, no one else would have known that I did it. Now, I mean, I could have told them and we'll get to that in a minute. But the key point here is the deployment script and the deployment configuration for that application lives out in a GitHub repo. And so anyone looking at this or troubleshooting it would look at that GitHub repo and they would not see the, the changes that I made directly on the server. Now also at some point in the future, someone's gonna to deploy to this server from the GitHub repo and whenever that happens, anything that I did manually to that server would get completely overwritten, which brings us right back to the situation we had earlier today where we just took out this primary route and now production is down. Now, one of the other options that was available to me is I could make the change on the server and then go update the repo to make it look like what I did to the server. But there's a couple problems with that. The first is I've done that in the past and I've made a typo. So I did it correctly on the server, but then I fat fingered something when I was updating the repo. Next deployment, guess what happens? Yeah, we're right back in that boat. But the other problem, the other bigger issue is discipline, right? Doing it that way is not the way that we agreed to do it as a team. So I'm violating the trust that I have with my team whenever I break that agreement. And also it breaks the discipline where we as a team said, hey, we're gonna do this step, then this step, then this step. And anytime I do something outside of that, you know, I'm creating habits that aren't sustainable. So here's the actual process that we're gonna do. I've got my editor open here, I've got the Kubernetes config up and here's the offending party right here. I'm missing a path. So I need to add a new path here. This one's called API. The path type is a prefix, which isn't really relevant to this conversation, but I got to type it in anyway. The back end is another Kubernetes service named API and it's on port number 3000. So that's actually it. That's the complete fix. That's all the typing that was necessary. So I'm going to um, go up here. I'm going to commit. Now we can't push the code directly to the main branch. So I need to create a new branch. This happened to be a production incident. So we have an incident number or an incident ticket. I'm going to use that ticket number as part of my get branch name. And then what do we do here? We added an ingress. So now the branch name is going to reference the ticket that I'm working under and the work that's performed in this specific pull request. So I'll create that branch. I've got my file committed here. 
I'm going to update my commit message. And now I'll commit and push this up to the repo. So now when I log into GitHub, it sees that I pushed up to this branch here. So I'm going to open up a pull request, create that pull request. I'm just kind of mocking a lot of these steps out to make the video for you so that you can see how I went through this in the scenario earlier today. Um, the pull request requires review from someone else. So I hit someone else up on the team. They took a look at it and that's just kind of like a sanity check to make sure I didn't um, either type something that was really dumb that would have broken it even further or, you know, get a, a second opinion on the way that I solve the problem too. You know, sometimes I'll try to solve a problem one way and during the pull review process, someone will say, well, you know, you could do it this way and then we'll talk about it and decide the best way to do it. So um, since we're just doing a demo here with you and I, we don't really have that option. And so what I'm going to do is as the administrator, I'm just going to merge that pull request with my admin privileges. I'll delete that branch. And so now if we switch back over to the code review section, our web.yaml file reflects the latest commit here for the change. And when we open that up, down here is the code that we added in our main branch. And as soon as that was deployed, production service or production was restored to a working status and we were on our way. And now that was the long way to do it, right? I could have just typed cube control edit and done it right there. But the reason that I didn't is because now there's a full audit trail of exactly how I solved this problem. We had a production issue, an incident ticket was created, I identified the issue, I created a branch in GitHub using that incident ticket number and then made my changes, opened a pull request, merged that in and deployed that. So now if I were to walk out of this company and never speak to anyone from this company ever again, there's still a full audit trail of exactly what I did to resolve this issue and the code is secured and backed up in our GitHub repo and it matches what's running out in production. So one last thing, if you haven't had a lot of experience in managing production outages, I've got a video where I go through exactly what that process should look like based on my years and years and years of experience of taking servers down in production. So I guess that's one actual benefit to doing that, but whatever. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you and, um, yeah, there you go. That's all I got. I'll see y'all in the next video.